Hi everyone, welcome back. Tonight we're going to continue on with our story, A Witch in a Fix by Marion Broderick by O'Brien Press. What's happened is that Anna, who is an apprentice witch, has actually turned one of her teachers that she didn't like very much into a huge rat and all sorts of things are happening. So we're going to find out what happens next. Chapter 10, As You Were. Next morning, I got up early and crept around the house like a ghost. I could not let Aunt Grizz and Auntie Wormella see my horrible new feet, so I made my breakfast and got ready for school before they were up. I jammed my feet into my wellies and wedged stock the socks inside. Then I limped to school. St Munchen's was in chaos. The new style mutant rat was popping up all over the place and scaring everyone half to death. Mr Com Mr Cuffy was stamping around in a fury, laying down poison traps and shouting at everyone. I'll kill that monster, he roared. I'll get it if it's the very last thing I do in this world. Own Brady's gang had come to school armed with homemade catapults. Every time there was a rustle behind a door or a table, they fired off soggy paper pellets. They never hit Miss Cuffy, of course. She was far too quick for them, but they hit each other and dozens of other kids. By lunchtime, the sick room was full of full to bursting with a steady stream of bruised, snivelling children. Meanwhile, Mary and I flopped around like two wet rags. We were so tired that we couldn't take in anything. Luckily, the school was in such an uproar that no one noticed. No one said anything about my wellies, and we got away with doing nothing all day. When the home time bell rang, Mary lifted her head off her desk and woke up a bit. At last, she said. So are we going rat hunting or what? Sure you still want to come, I said. She shot me a withering look. Someone needs to keep an eye on you, don't they? Have you got your witchy kit with you? Let's have a look. I put my fingers to my lips. We waited until the last person had left class. Then I opened my bag. One pointy hat, I said. One genuine witch's wand and one book of brilliant spells. But Mary was difficult to impress. That magic book looks a bit dog-eared, she said, poking at it. Your hat's got a hole in it and your wand is bent. It was all I could manage at short notice, I said. Come on, let's go. We slipped out of class and followed the gravel park out of school grounds to the bottom of the Cuffy's garden. The big school bins were there all right. They were overflowing with rubbish because the bin men hadn't been for a week. And boy, did they stink. Here, ratty, ratty, called Mary, holding her nose. Come on, there's a good girl. She's not a puppy, Mary, I said. And we've got to be quiet. She's dangerous, remember? But Mary just giggled. We searched around the bins. It was gross. The, kid, the lids wouldn't close because there was a week's worth of rotting school dinners spilling out at the top of each bin. Flies and wasps buzzed around our heads as we poked around. Suddenly, Mary made a strangled sound, grabbed my arm and pointed upwards to the top of one of the bins. Sure enough, there she was, Cuffy the monster rat. Crouched on a pile of green, mouldy sausages, she looked even more enormous by daylight. She was gnawing hard at the rotting meat and the back bristles of her greasy tail stood an end in pleasure. I nudged Mary and put my finger to my lips. I opened my bag as quickly as I could, lifted out my witch hat and jammed it on my head, whipped out the wand and spell book. I threw away the bag. Mrs. Cuffy's ears twitched, but she continued chewing on the sausages. Keeping one eye on her, I picked up some twigs and made a magic star on the ground around me. Greedy pig, whispered Mary, wrinkling her nose. No offence, Anna. I just mean she's so huge. She'll probably eat anything now. She'll probably eat us if we stand here long enough, I whispered. You better take cover. This is the difficult bit. Don't worry, I'm off, said Mary. She shot behind the nearest bin and stayed there. Peeping out from the side, she gave me a thumbs up. I opened my spell book at a page near the back. The spell's titled read, As You Were. I raised my wand and drew a deep breath, but before I had a chance to say anything, Mrs. Cuffy's head shot up and her whiskers twitched. Blasted, I thought. She spotted me. But Mrs. Cuffy wasn't looking at me. She was gazing straight past me over my shoulder. I heard a crunch in the gravel behind me and I spun around. Mr. Cuffy was standing on the path. He was holding a shotgun and pointing it straight at Mrs. Cuffy. Chapter 11. Anna's Spell. Out of my way, Missy. And you won't get hurt, shouted Mr. Cuffy. I was so shocked at the sight of the school caretaker waving a gun about that I dropped my spell book and my wand in a puddle. Mrs. Cuffy's reaction wasn't just as dramatic. When she saw Mr. Cuffy, she stood up on her huge hind legs, held out her arms and whimpered. Mr. Cuffy raised his gun and my heart nearly stopped. No, Mr. Cuffy, I shouted. You can't. You can't kill her. That's what you think, he shouted. I'll not let it escape a second time. Move yourself, girlie, now. But you don't understand, I pleaded. That right rat, she's your wife. Mr. Cuffy's eyes shriveled towards me. His red face went dark purple and the veins in his forehead stood out so much they looked as though they would pop. I beg your pardon, he shouted. How dare you? 
For a moment I thought he was going to shoot me instead of Mrs. Cuffy. I covered my face with my hands. Mr. Cuffy struggled to control his temper. No one gets the better of Joe Cuffy, he hissed, stamping down the path, the path towards the bins. Animal, human or child. By now Miss Cuffy was leaping up and down on the rubbish, wagging her finger at Mr. Cuffy and squealing at the top of her thin, ratty voice. Mr. Cuffy looked confused for a moment. It was as if the rat reminded him of someone. Then he shook his head, raised the shotgun to his shoulder again and placed his finger on the trigger. Say your prayers, rodent, he said. Slowly, his fingers started to squeeze the trigger. Mrs. Cuffy stopped jumping and froze on the spot. Her beady black eyes swiveled from her husband to me and back again. Was it my imagination or was she asking for help? I had to act and act fast. I scrambled on my feet and jumped back inside my magic star. I couldn't read my book or spells because it was soaked and filthy, so I pointed one index figure, finger at Mrs. Cuffy and one at Mr. Cuffy and made up a rhyme in the spot. Mr. Cuffy, spare her life. Don't pull the trigger on your wife. Mrs. C, though you've been bad, resume the shape, the human form you had. But one thing more before you start, you'll both forget about my part. The seconds tricked by. I held my breath. Everyone seems frozen in time. Then Mrs. Cuffy unfroze herself, spat a bit of mouldy sausage at me and began to climb down the side of the bin. She was still a rat. Meanwhile, Mr. Cuffy unfroze himself, shot me a dirty look and raised his gun again. Don't give up, Anna, shouted Mary, her face peering around the bin. Was hopeful and both of her thumbs were raised as a sign of good luck. One more time, she shouted. I did the rhyme again, but this time at the top of my voice. At last, I felt the magic power surging through my legs and into my arms and flowing out through my fingers towards Mr. and Mrs. Cuffy. There was a flash of blue flame and a deafening bang. When the smoke cleared, a grimy, greasy human Mrs. Cuffy was clinging to the side of the rubbish bin. Mr. Cuffy's mouth was open and his gun was on the ground. He goggled at his wife. What the? he whispered. Adele? Joey! shouted Mrs. Cuffy, reaching out both arms to her husband and crashing to the ground. Mr. Cuffy raced forward to his wife and dragged her to the feet. Adele, is that really you? Look at the state of you. Where on earth have you been? I don't know, Joey, whimpered Mrs. Cuffy. What do you mean you don't know, shouted Mr. Cuffy. He looked around him. And where's that blasted rat? What rat, Joey, said Mrs. Cuffy. She looked down at herself. Why do I look like this? What's been happening? Mary and I exchanged glances. I edged over to her hiding place. Time for us to push off, I think, I said. Mary nodded and broke into a huge dimpled smile. We slunk into the bushes and headed for home. Chapter 12 firm but fair. The next morning the whole school echoed to the sounds of Mr Curry complaining that Mrs Winkle had taken his gun away. He was also very suspicious of Mrs Cuffy who couldn't remember a thing about where she'd been for three days. As for the huge rat he simply couldn't understand what happened to it. Meanwhile Mrs Cuffy was taken down to the police station and told off for disappearing and wasting police time. By now I felt pretty sorry for both of them. Soon I felt so guilty that I found myself outside Mrs Winkle's office ready to confess everything and ask for help with my own little problem. Come in Anna Kelly, shouted Mrs Winkle before I'd even knocked. I took a deep breath and I entered. Well, 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 said Mrs Winkle, if it isn't our very own trainee witch and part-time burglar. She peered over her glasses and her piercing blue guys gaze skewered me onto the floor. Everything in the office was neat and tidy and as usual and the broken window had already been replaced. There was no sign of the magic box. I've, I've come to apologise, Miss Winkle. You were right all, all along. It was me who turned Miss Cuffy into a rat in the first place, right here in school. I knew it, said Mrs Winkle, rapping the desk with her knuckles. And yet you looked at me straight in the eye and lied about it. I know, I mumbled, very ashamed. I was trying to wriggle out of trouble. And how did you get into my magic box, said Mrs Winkle. I stole the key, I said. Then I had a fight with Mrs Cuffy, which got a bit messy. It was me who wasted all the sorcery slime. Do you know how difficult it is to make that stuff, said Mrs Winkle. You have to milk beetles. It takes weeks. I looked up. And there's another thing, I've said. I've told Mary Maxwell that I'm a witch. You did what? said Mrs Winkle, raising from behind her desk and pacing the floor. This is getting worse and worse. I'm sorry, I said. You'll have to be punished, you know, said Mrs Winkle. Yes, I know, she, I said, sighing, but I think it's already started. I kicked off my wellies and I peeled off my socks. My piggy feet looked hideous. Mrs Winkle put her fingers over her lips as if to stifle a laugh. Yes, I see what you mean, she said. That'll be the pinky porker, porker powder that was scattered all over the carpet, right? Yes, miss, I said. Anna, that's a taste of your own medicine. I want you to remember how it feels, said Mrs Winkle. In future, you never use ma magic to settle scores with people you don't like. Yes, miss, I said. Or lie to your superiors, she said. 
Yes, miss, I said. Or broadcast your powers to the world, she said. It will never happen again, miss. Mrs. Wrinkle sat down. Now, your punishment, she said. Firstly, I'll speak to your aunt and make sure you are grounded for the rest of term. I sighed. I was expecting that one. Secondly, you will spend every evening for the next two weeks making more sorcery slime to replace what you wasted. Two weeks up to my eyes in beetles. Great. Yes, miss, I said, trying to sound chirpy about it. Thirdly, you will put a strong forgetting spell on Mary Maxwell, said Mrs. Winkle. She must remember nothing about your little adventure. Is that clear? I felt tears prick in my eyes. I hadn't realised how lonely I was keeping my secret all to myself until I told Mary. I clasped my hands together and I gazed up at Mrs. Winkle. Please, miss, I said. I trust Mary. She's my best friend. She'd never do anything to harm me. I'd do anything else you want. But please, please, can't she know who I am and what I am? Mrs. G Winkle gazed at me steadily for a moment and drummed on the desk with her long fingers. Will you take another punishment, she said, instead? Any other punishment? This is risky. Who knew what Mrs. Winkle was going to come up with? I dried my eyes and I took a deep breath. Yes, miss, I said in a small wobbly voice. Mrs. Winkle leapt out of her seat and pointed at me. I gasped. The wand in her hand had appeared out of nowhere. How about if I turn the rest of you into a pig? Let's say for a month, she boomed, and see how you like it. I blinked and I swallowed hard. Life as a pig? Was I really ready to pay such a high price for my friendship with Mary? Okay, I whispered. Whatever you say. Mrs. Wrinkle raised her arms high. She stood looking, we stood looking at each other without blinking for a long moment, but the spell that trem trembled on her lips never came. Her blue eyes softened. She lowered her arms and she sat down. I'm not made of stone, Anna, she said. I know being a witch can be a lonely business sometimes. I'll allow Mary Maxwell to keep your secret, but in return you will do something else. You will help Mrs. Cuffey in the science lab every morning before school for the rest of term and learn to get along with her. I heaved a deep sigh and I nodded. Firm but fair. That's what they called Mrs. Winkle. And I had to admit it was true. I wasn't looking forward to the next two weeks, but I'd certainly learned my lesson about using my powers in the right way. Do you agree with this plan, Anna? said Mrs. Winkle. Yes, miss, I said. Right, sign here, please, she said, whipping out a sheet of paper from her desk. I read through the paper. It was a contract stating all the things I'd promised to do. Mrs. Winkle certainly wasn't taking any chances. I signed my name at the bottom. Finished, said Mrs. Winkle. She smiled and clicked her fingers. You can put your shoes and socks on now. I bent down to grab my shoes and socks and gasped. Instead of the pig trotters, I was looking at my own two familiar feet. I was no longer part pig. I was human again. See how good it feels to be a human, said Mrs. Winkle. Remember that, Anna Kelly. I felt a massive weight lift off my shoulders. Yes, miss, I shouted. Thanks, miss. I was free. I turned and raced out of the office. Outside in the sunny playground, Mary and the other kids were playing football.